So. Right. <clears throat> um, well, that's interesting. Well, I think I've just seen Steve. Yes. Yes. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Anyway, uh, so we're very pleased today to welcome um, uh, Sam. And Sam, do you want to introduce yourself? Um, sure. Uh, I'm Sam Lomonaco. <laughs> uh, All right. Let me see, uh, let me... <laughs> just one second. I'm trying to figure out how to share. And uh, uh, I'll be. I'm going to thank uh, you, Roger, and also uh, Lou for giving me an opportunity to speak today. And I'm going to talk on one of my uh, favorite topics. Uh, let me, uh, there, that's better. Excuse me, I'm making some adjustments on um, my computer. And um, the interesting thing, I thought this would, uh, when I accepted the invitation, I thought this would be an, uh, an easy, uh, easy talk because um, I have given a talk some time ago on quantum entanglement. And uh, I went through the talk trying to manipulate it. And I saw that my understanding of quantum ent entanglement has actually changed and deepened. And so I'm going to give an entirely di different talk today. And I'm going back to the uh, 19th century or the 20th century, in fact, because I'm going to give it on the chalkboard. But of course, the chalkboard I'm going to use is going to be one note. And uh, I use this for my classes. So let me see if it's possible for me to share the screen, if I may. Okay. You're allowed. Oh, good. It's working, I think. And uh, so, uh, whoops, I'm supposed to, what happened to the share screen? Oh, here it is. There. All right. And uh, let me go to OneNote. And... Uh, it's a Let launch it meeting again, it says. Pardon? Mine said launch meeting again. I don't know are, there, are there troubles? Not anymore. I lost my main screen. You lost ah, your main screen. I got screen. it. You're on. You're on. Okay. Uh, here, let me enlarge this a little, if I may. And um, the title of this talk is um, Quantum Entanglement and Northern Charges. And... Um, I'd like to say that this talk is based on the following uh, papers, uh, one by Linda and Popescu, uh, another by Linda Popescu and Sudbury, uh, then by Myers and Wallach, and a paper I wrote some time ago on an entangled tale of quantum entanglement. Okay. Um, so let me now, I'm going to turn my computer into a notepad so I can write on it. Mm -hmm. Let's hope I'll be successful. All right. I have to put everyone up there and let's see what we can do. Um, let's see. Let me talk. <laughs> oh, this technology is most amazing, most amazing. Okay, and I want to use the drawing part of this, but I want to choose the proper thickness. And let's hope this works. Wish me luck. Um, so I'd like to begin by saying that quantum, whoops, quantum um, entanglement. which I'll just abbreviate as QE, um, uh, is uh, an, an important and central um, feature. I see, since I've turned my computer into uh, a notepad, you see the ceiling of my room, <laughs> a feature of quantum mechanics. So I have to say that. And I'll explain more of it later. Um, 
I'd like to begin the talk by actually saying what I will not discuss. Okay, we, quantum entanglement is a huge field, so I can't cover all of it in one talk. I will not. Um, discuss, my pen goes out, will not discuss um, in this talk uh, the following things. Number one, ex aspects of quantum entanglement related Um, to classical communication um, and stochastic local operations. And um, in particular, um, we focus on the LO um, in the acronyms um, L O C C and S L O C C, which are well known in quantum information. The first one says local operation and classical compute and uh, classical communication, and the other stands for stochastic local operations and and classical um, communication. Okay, and um, we won't be working on mixed ensembles. We uh, focus only on pure state um, entanglement of n qubit, and I'll explain the terms later, multipartite. Um, quantum systems. Okay, so now I've told you what I'm not going to talk about. Let's talk about what I'm going to talk about. So the big question and what is quantum entanglement? And uh, I'll give you my answer to the question. Uh, but I like, there are lots of questions here. Uh, more questions. Um, and so, big question is how um, do we? measure quantum entanglement, uh, quantify quantum entanglement, and classify quantum entanglement. Let me know if this is unlegible. Uh, I can slow down a little bit. Uh, so one of the questions is when is the quantum entanglement of two uh, quantum systems the same and different. And when is it different? Another question would be, let's see, I should enlarge this. Let's see how. Huh? 
<laughs> uh, different. Okay. And um, the other question, part of the question is when is the quantum entanglement of one uh, quantum system um, greater uh, than that of another. Good question. Um, and I'd like to just say that finding answers to these questions uh, is, I would say, challenging, as we will see, and intriguing, at least I find it so. And finally, and I was this is my warning, it's very addictive, so watch out. And keeps giving out on me. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Um, so uh, let's start with an intuition. That's the driving force of mathemat mathematics intuition. So let's start with, and let me just give you a uh, intuitive definition of what quantum entanglement is. And actually it's a, uh, I'm paraphrasing in a very rough manner, something said by John Preskill, quantum entanglement is the information stored uh, within of the non-classical oh. technology is great, huh? I need my eraser. Come on, eraser. Okay, now I can go back, sort of. Um, non, excuse me, non-classical uh, correlations. between the parts, oh, come on, between the parts of a multi-partite quantum system. Um, quantum entanglement Quantum entanglement remains unchanged by uh, applications, local operations uh, on the component parts by local unitary, gotta be careful here, can measure it, uh, unitary operation on the components, uh, or I should say our parts, our components of the quantum system. And finally, I'd like to say in this intuition 
quantum entanglement can be created and destroyed um, by global unitary um, operations and also by quantum measurements, local or global. Okay, so that's sort of an intuition, but the big question now is, and please, uh, if you can't hear me or something, let me know. <laughs> I don't know exactly how you let me know. Question. Um, my sound doesn't cut up. Um, how can we reformulate? The above intuition. Uh, into a concise, well-defined oh, excuse me a uh, well-defined Uh, concept. So that's what we're going to do today. Okay, uh, let's begin with Northern's theorem. Uh, Northern's theorem. Or I should say Northern's theorem. Loud O theorem. Okay, yes, someone has a question. All right, uh, for each V group symmetry. <coughs> of a physical system uh, there is a conserved um, charger current And um, example, um, the conserved charge uh, of a physical system Uh, that is invariant uh, under the Lee group on the action of the Lee, Lee group of orientation preserving Uh, rigid translations um, of three space is linear momentum.
This is our conserved charge. So it's the most amazing theorem. Uh, another was an amazing mathematician. And so now the, I get to the central theme of the talk itself, and that is See, I, I could see I can write faster than my computer processor can handle. Um, central theme of the talk is quantum entanglement is a fragile um, fragile. Why do I do that? Um, Lee symmetry. of quantum systems. These are just to scratch something else than to raise it, I see. Okay, um, so let's begin by the doing the following. Um, uh, let's consider in Alice's Alice sub one, Alice sub two, all the way out to Alice sub n, each possessing someone has a mic on, possessing, if you could turn that mic off, appreciate it, uh, respectively, unless you're asking a question. Sounds like Gloria. <laughs> Who knows? It's Rolfson answering the door. Could be. <laughs> it's exciting. Okay. Um, respectively, and a qubit is a quantum system, Q1, Q2, up to Qn. Um, each living... each respectively um, with underlying um, Hilbert spaces or Hilbert space and let me put the um, H1, H2 and so forth, HN. And since these are qubits, these are two dimensional uh, Hilbert spaces, complex spaces. Okay. Uh, then the multipartite uh, quantum system. which I also denote by Q, uh, consisting uh, of all N um, qubits as associated um, the Hilbert space which is the tensor product of all the Hilbert spaces. H is equal to H1 tensor, H2 tensor, all the way out to Hn. So that's the state of the multi-part, the Hilbert space or state space of the multi-partite system. Okay, in this talk, we will consider two Lie group symmetries of 
a multipartite in qubit quantum system. Okay, the first is global. And um, just the action of the unitary group. The dimension of the tensor product is two to the n. The action on, and it acts on the Hilbert space. And this is, um, okay, this is the unitary group. Okay, and uh, and this includes, just intuitively, includes all uh, possible uh, unitary operations um, including Ops, including those of all the analysis working together or separately. and a lot more, which I won't go into. The one we're interested in is the local symmetry. And this will be the, uh, the local group, L of N, it's an L, and that's going to be the tensor product of um, SU2s. I guess there are N of them, N of those. And this is our local group. Okay. Um, where of course, I guess you'd say SU2 is the special uh, unitary group. Each SU2 uh, um, uh, in the above tensor product. Uh, consists of all the unitary um, all the unitary actions I guess I'd say got to be careful using the word actions I guess the actions that each Alice uh, can independently, and alone um, apply uh, to her qubit. So this is our mathematical uh, framework in which we can work. Okay, so now the question is, any questions so far? Okay, um, the big question, Okay, uh, when do two states of, 
of our multipartite system of the Hilbert space H contain the same quantum entanglement. So this is our question, and this is what we're focusing on. And our answer is the following. I'll give it in terms of a definition. Definition. Um, two states. Uh, lying in our state space are said to be, are said to have um, the same quantum QE, I guess, quantum entanglement type. Sounds like not theory, doesn't it? Quantum entanglement type written follows if and only if there exists an element of our local group, you might have guessed this already, such that um, that transforms one state into the other. So Alice is working independently, can transform one state to the other with their local unitary operation. Okay. Now, of course, now we know um, this defines an equivalence relation um, on the state space. H. Um, Partitioning H um, H into equivalence classes. Uh, which we uh, call entanglement classes. Um, okay. And of course, the entanglement classes Or the orbits of the local group L of N acting on the state space H. Okay. So, Sam, can yes. I uh, just ask a question? So Please. If um, if something if some if two states are in the same class, are they entangled or is it the other way around? Uh, they have the same entanglement. Right. So uh, the all states in the same entanglement class have the same entanglement. They right. lie in different class classes. They have different entanglement. So a state being entangled with another state you haven't defined? No, we're talking, um, there's the global multipartite system. Hmm. Within that, the sub-quantum systems are entangled, but that forms one global state. Um, um, let's see, answer to your question. put this here, um, consider um, 
cap psi equal to cap zero, cap one, plus uh, cap one, cap zero, over the square root of two. That is a well-known EPR state. I guess in the EPR paper, they use minus or plus, it doesn't really matter. This is an entangled state. Uh, this is a multipartite system consisting of two qubits, and the two qubits are entangled, okay? And this is a representative of an equivalence class in the larger Hilbert space. That helped? Uh, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Thanks. Okay, helps. So, yes, question. Someone had a question there. Okay, um, so I see. Uh, I'm glad you suggested that. I guess I should have put more examples in this talk. I will, uh, I guess, later. Okay, um, but you know, essentially, uh, quantum entanglement. Uh, is defined as, as William Thurston would have said, by the orbifold. Um, um, H point in this orbifold is an entanglement class. Each point in orbifold is a different type of entanglement. why my pen cuts out with from me every so often okay any questions please ask questions the more the merrier okay um well let me ask a question then question so you can see this the the, the problem of quantum entanglement is uh very much like the problem of uh not theory it's an invariant problem about discussing invariance of entanglement. Question. Um, of course, the, the basic question is the classification question. Why is it my pen cutting out on me? It has new batteries. Um, When do um, now what? Um, what's happened here? We couldn't start one note this last time. I don't know what's going on. I guess uh, start normally. Okay, good. Sorry, I, my system acts up every so often. Uh, when do two um, states um, psi one and psi two um, have the same? are different entanglement. And we're going to work on the classification problem. Okay. And, um, and our answer to this A question uh, by 
currently using or creating invariance of entanglement. It's amazing how closely this follows in a certain sense, at least at the categorical level, um, not theory. Okay. So we need to define what we mean by quantum entanglement invariant. So definition and entanglement invariant um, is a C infinity. Perhaps I should make it analytic, but I'm going to make it C infinity map uh, from the multi-partite multi uh, Hilbert space into the real numbers. This is the reals. Okay. Um, such that uh, for every element in the local group, F of G of kept psi is equal to F of kept psi. That's it, it's a very simple objective and now uh, definition. And now our objective, we can see, um, find a complete set of invariants Uh, for quantum entanglement. So that's our quest at this time. Of course, <laughs> we've got a, an objective. <laughs> How do you do it? Okay. And it turns out, um, maybe I shouldn't tell you what the preview is or the punchline. We find a system of partial differential equations whose, uh, whose solutions are all the invariants and then try to solve the system. So, but I uh, haven't gotten there. Question. Uh, um, how do we find quantum entanglement variance? And that's the next part of the talk. I think I have just enough time uh, to do it. Uh, the answer is use Lie group invariant theory. Okay. And we'll work at the infinitesimal level. Um, let L of N denote Lie algebra of the local group L of N. Um, then the infinitesimal generators Um, generators uh, of L of N are the following. List them for you. Um, I'm multiplying by the complex number I and you could think of XJ as a matrix. XJ, and I'll explain what that is in a symbol. Uh, well, here's the definition. It's a complex number I times one, the identity linear transformation in SU2, tensor to the J minus one, uh, tensor X, tensor one, tensor N minus J. Um, now all I've done is I, in the tensor products of the SU2s, I've just inserted X in one of the tensor products in one uh, and the identity transformation in the other. 
and I'll explain what X, Y, and Z I'll show you are just the poly spin operators. Uh, X, Y, J is equal to I times one, the same thing. I think I should just, guess I'll put them all in here. Y, uh, one tensor, N minus J. And the last one is um, I, Z, J is equal to I times one tensor, um, J minus one. Um, love writing here. Soon will not be so much. Okay, where uh, J is greater than or equal to one and less than, they're in positions, in qubits, in positions. And, um, and where um, X is equal to zero, one, one, zero. Y is equal to zero minus I, I, zero. Z uh, is equal to one, zero, zero minus one are the well-known Pali spin operators. So we need to work with these infinitesimal generators. Okay, here we go. And uh, how do we find the invariance? Okay. Question? what we're after. That's our gold or pot of gold. Okay. Okay. Uh, basically, each element uh, of each element, I guess it looks like an element of Uh, the Lie algebra L of N uh, defines or corresponds to a vector field on the Hilbert space H. In particular, um, we have a morphism from the Lie algebra L of N, I'll call it nu, into the vector, vec the vector space of all vector fields on the Hilbert space H. Vector space of vector fields on H. Okay. Uh, let vec sub L of H uh, denote image of nu. This is what we need to work with. Okay. All right. Thus, it now follows that the following theorem, a C infinity map from the Hilbert space into the real numbers is a quantum entanglement invariant if and only if the following PDEs are satisfied. And I'll D I X I F uh no oh, gee. So hard to erase. I guess I'll just scratch it out and go to next. I should build this software a little better. Um, D, 
i x i f equals zero. What's well, x j? Excuse me. D i y j f is equal to zero. D i z j f is equal to zero. Four. Uh, J equal one, two, all the way up to N, where those are the directional derivatives in the direction of each of the vector fields. That's exactly what they are. Okay, and uh, I'm getting to the punchline, I guess. Answer, getting close to our question. Um, we can find all invariants by solving um, the above system of PDEs. Okay. And we can find a complete set of invariants that way, provided we can solve the system. I could state that as a theorem, but I think uh, no need to do that. We're running out of time, so I'll quickly skip to the final punchline where we actually compute what these partial differential equations are and look at ways of solving them. Okay, uh, theorem. Let epsi be equal to, be a, um, j equals zero to the following state, two to the n minus one, z, j, ket j. So j is an integer which can be expanded in binary. So you can think of it both as an integer and a string of zeros and ones. And this is an element of our multipartite Hilbert space where the amplitudes zj are of the form uh, xj plus complex number i times yj. X, uh, xj, yj are contained in the real numbers, okay. And we'll let, we need a compact notation, let z denote the column vector. Um, I see I changed my indexing screen. I'm calling the first qubit the zeroth qubit, starting the indexing from zero, I see. Suddenly switched, I apologize, but this will make things simpler. So it's the, I'll put a transpose there, it's a column vector. Um, so uh, definition, so anyone's Z theory, we'll see this immediately. Uh, let um, F of Z be an element, a mapping from the Hilbert space H into the real numbers and uh, let uh, I, M be a skew me, Hermitian matrix lying in the local Lie algebra. Then um, the directional, just barely finishing in time, well, it'd be faster, directional, a derivative, d sub i m acting on f of z of f of z in the direction I am, it's any skew Hermitian matrix, is defined um, as the limit. What I've done is I've taken the definition, put it in a form we can compute, uh, d i sub m of f of z is equal to the limit. This is of, as epsilon goes to zero, of f 
of the exponential map of I epsilon M uh, acting on Z minus F of Z divided by epsilon. And um, the reason I'm doing this is I want to compute it. Limit, uh, is F, that's the same as the limit of so approach to zero uh, of F just using the power series expansion, Z plus I epsilon M of Z plus O of epsilon squared. Um, minus f of z over epsilon. Now, the above, the key thing is the above definition reduces the task of computing E I M F of Z to simply computing the Taylor series expansion. So it just reduces it to a problem and I guess second semester calc. Okay. Um, so um, I think I'm gonna skip some parts of this. Um, let me show you the system of equations, I guess. That's what I have and I have them already written out here. Let me go here. Uh, here, and let me, let's see if I can make this more readable for people. Oh, this is the problem. All right, here's the uh, system of PDEs. I can enlarge it if you want that you can compute. I've drawn it without the function f of z there, but essentially for each k, k go, goes, um, the indexing starts by naming the qubits from zero to the n minus one. This is your system of PDEs. The um, first system of PDEs is actually physically meaningless because it is related to the global overall global phase, which in quantum mechanics is meaningless. And the, another way of saying that is the state space of a quantum system is not really the Hilbert space, but complex pr projective space of that. Um, that is the space of all complex lines through the origin of your Hilbert space. So that equation just disappears when we go downstairs with the, the vector fields. Okay, um, what can I say? Well, um, we've got these formulas here. Um, I'm running out of time. So let me just, um, if I may, uh, what's known? And what's not known? The known and the unknown, I guess I can talk about that. Um, Lyndon Popescu, uh, Sudbury, um, have found a complete, I'll put, Uh, quotation marks around that, and I'll explain it later, set of polynomial uh, nomial solutions for n equal to qubits. And the reason I put uh, a um, quotation marks about the complete. I really think there are more invariants, but they are uh, basically uh, not polynomial invariants. Um, they're of transcendental functions. 
but that's a different matter. Uh, the number of algebraically independent solutions for pure states of algebraically independent solutions uh, grows as big O of two to the number of qubits. So this is getting interesting. Okay, now open questions. Finally, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna run slightly, a little over time, but not much. Okay, questions or open questions. Welcome anyone to join me in this research project. It's lots of fun. Uh, first of all, find a complete set of solutions um, that is quantum entanglement invariance. Um, to um, the PTE equations. All n greater than or equal to two. Second, partition um, the big O of two to the n solutions into big O of, let's, oh, big O of N equivalence classes uh, in a meaningful way. Okay, and what do, what do I mean by that? And observation of uh, the symmetric group SN um, basically is a symmetry of the set of solutions. In other words, uh, the naming of the qubits as zero, one, up to their n, n qubits, n minus one, is arbitrary. And hence, physically meaningless. And at this point, I'll say the end and thank you very much. And I'll stop the uh, share at this time. I hope you're still there as he stopped the share. Well, I'm still here, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here you go and stop the share. Okay, right. I'm here and any questions? I ran slightly over time, sorry about that, but we got there. Thank you, Sam. Uh, well, I think that was a great introduction. Uh, and you might think of coming back and doing a second hour at some point, you know? Yeah. I, I, you I'd like to, to touch the people again, huh? 
Okay, I mean, thank I'd you. Like her her glut gluttons for punishment. Right. When, um, yeah. Thank you. I'd like to see some solutions when N is, say, one or two, you know, really low. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you can find some of those solutions in uh, the um, second paper that's yeah. written okay. uh, that I have listed there. But they're polynomial yeah. solutions. So, right. so could you please remember to send uh, send us an email? Send me an email with your slides, uh, and also with a list of references. And I may take some references and actually put them in the Dropbox for you. Oh, thank you. I'll do that uh, right away. I'll just put everything together as one big uh, uh, PDF file for you and send it to you. Great. Yeah. Do, do oh. you give any to a maximally entangled state? Uh, let's see. That's an interesting question. What do you mean by a maximally entangled state? It depends on your definition. So there are as many definitions of maximally entangled states as uh, there are uh, maybe atoms in the universe. I'm exaggerating a little bit. Um, you can uh, define Essentially, uh, if you have a bipartite state, then it becomes clear what maximal entanglement, entanglement means, I believe. In that case, it's just the von Neumann entropy. If you uh, trace out or ignore one of the qubits, it, you enter and you create uncertainty, and there's an entropy associated with that. But there are many other entropies that are associated with uh, um, larger than uh, two qubits, and um, uh, you can, there are many ways, and uh, those are actually invariants of the system. I didn't have a chance to talk about that. They're actually um, quantum entanglement invariants. So um, the reason I can't answer your question is there, uh, there is just no one de definition of what is meant by maximum entanglement. Well, but what uh, definitions do you recommend? <laughs> you won't let me off the hook, will you, Lou? Well, well, but for example, I know you're uh, you you really like um, uh, the Linden and Popescu point of view, and maybe they have a definition. Is there? Do they have a definition that's useful? I don't think anything like that's mentioned in paper, but uh -huh. I suggest. Um, a definition, uh, let's see, I guess if I could share the screen again and write something down, uh, share screen. Okay, and uh, let me go beyond the end here. here. system is causing unbelievable problems. All right, let's try again. All right, good. And uh, so um, recall um, definition of density operator. Okay, let uh, I'm, I'm going to define it for pure states. Uh, let um, psi be an n part tight uh, pure state. I can find it from mixed ensembles, but uh, it will take too long. Okay. There. Okay. The state. Then the operator uh, row is the projector, this projector, okay? Um, in physics, they work with density operators rather than kits because most of the time in, in uh, real physical systems, uh, you don't know exactly what the state is. It's one of many different states, so it's a mixed ensemble. And row is something created by John Evoy Norman to deal with that problem. But now let, um, 
uh, S be equal to the set of qubits. Okay. Let A be any subset of S. So we're going to partition the N qubits into uh, those which belong to A and those which do not belong to A and talk about with that partition what is the entanglement. Then we can take uh, the entropy which is the minus the trace right. trace with respect to A of rho. Let's see, wait a minute. I have to be careful here. Oh, excuse me. Do it a little differently. Um, let rho A equal to partial trace. We ignore all the qubits in and um, in rho which creates a, a random, a mixed ensemble. It looks like it's noise, but it's lack of knowledge. And then we define the entropy uh, sub A of rho. It is equal to minus the trace of rho A, uh, natural log of rho A. You can diagonalize and compute this. This is the entropy. And, and uh, one of the entropies is an entropy for each subset. This is an invariant of the system. And so it has to be a solution to the system of PDEs. And if you have two of the entities, you have a complete set of solutions. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, Guess I'll get out of the share again. And so much for that. Any other comments or questions or suggestions? Well, I think perhaps we, we've over, overstayed anyway, but maybe maybe there's plenty of uh, material here for another talk. Um, I don't know what you think, Sam. But, um, oh, sure. Uh, let me uh, give me a little time to put it together oh, and I'll be sure. glad to do that. And uh, it'd be fun if people are interested. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a very interesting talk. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, thank you. And um, any any questions? Um, I, I have a question. Uh, the, uh, does one, as in representation theory, perform uh, an averaging over... Uh, over the group acting on the states in order to arrive properties of the function. And does that relate to the PDE system? Uh, 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 averaging as in you integrate or sum over all elements of the group acting on the state and obtain maybe a decomposition? I I'm only half understand what you said, but you're doing an that's a way of creating other Invariance, yes. Uh, could you explain a little more? Well, I, I mean, this, I, I'm just thinking if one wanted to find uh, such a function, a very simple represent, basic representation theory would say, take an arbitrary function and integrate or sum the function uh, over uh, all G of the uh, points on yours. Oh, over the group acting on the space, the function evaluated at uh, all the possible orbits uh, of, of a point. And then you would obtain a function that is invariant under the group action by construction, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe the Har you're talking about the Hari interval, I guess, over an orbit. That'd be a very interesting idea. I'd think about that. Yes. Okay. I, I think, sorry, uh, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to have to call this to an end now. I mean, there's there's all sorts of interesting questions. So this could maybe be uh, delayed for uh, the next talk, Sam. Oh, um, sure. Anyone yeah. who wants to contact me, please feel free to do so. Okay. Um, but I, I, I think we ought to draw it to a close now. Um, I would just, just like to say that,
there will be a talk next week. Uh, not sure what it is yet, but I will send around details. And there's an extra talk on a Friday afterwards, which I think is the 5th of June. But anyway, I will send around details about that later. And OK, I'd just like to finish by thanking Sam again for his interesting, uh, very uh, stimulating talk. Thank you. Sam. Thank you for, for the invitation. It was fun. Oh. Okay, I'm going. I'm going to stop now.